What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Trick Tennis. This is part two of this brand new 2022 well-built 1448. This boat build is going to be dope. I know what you guys are thinking already. You're like, oh my God, this guy was talking so much in the first episode. I can't even watch anymore. I can't subscribe to his channel. He was blah, 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 blah. Okay, if you haven't seen part one, go watch it right now before you watch this video because nothing I'm gonna do right now is gonna make sense to you if you haven't already seen it. I did a lot of talking in that episode because I wanted to explain to you what I'm doing and I'm not gonna do that now. So I'm gonna get right into this build. I'm gonna do a couple of things different that I've never done. I'm gonna build my first side rod locker on top of that I'm going to incorporate the side panel as a switch panel similar to what I did in the Neptune build I'm really trying to take this thing to the next step to the next level because the last aluminum boat build that I did was on Lunkers TV's YouTube channel with 2 million subscribers obviously that thing was crazy it was a lot of work in a short amount of time and i just want to get this thing done i want to keep it up i want to keep stepping up to the next level i hope you guys are ready because i'm ready to get into this build let's get back to work all right it's friday and i just got off work i'm gonna hang around for a little bit i'm gonna try to cut some material and build some stuff so i can take it home and work on the boat this weekend real quick this is my dry hatch track right here this is something that I had to buy a custom die for, and I get this extruded in 20 foot lengths. I sell these for $5.50 a foot, and you guys are handy enough to make your own hatches. Now I did go ahead and cut some of this up. Right here I have, this is gonna be two hatches right here. This is gonna be the ones that go into the back bench seat. This is gonna be a 23 by a 13 and three quarter. These are really custom sizes. They're gonna drop into that back bench seat perfectly. I'm gonna go ahead and cut up a couple of more pieces. I need to get the live well lid cut out and maybe the side panels. I'm thinking about keeping the entire build layout symmetrical. So I gotta keep that in mind when I'm building stuff. I can use a hatch for either side just for dry fitting. I'm gonna put you guys on a time lapse. Let's get back to work. Okay, so I put these frames for the hatches inside the boat. You see this whole back deck, that's pretty much layout completed. We're gonna have the two big hatches on either side, big one in the back, and I'm probably gonna throw a seat pedestal base in the middle of that. Now, I'm kind of playing around with the idea of how to lay this out. These two hatch frames, this, I'm definitely gonna use these up here. This is gonna be a big storage. This is gonna be the live well. Now, this one, I'm not 100% sure. I might make this a little smaller. I'm not going to run these angles you know from the front deck to the back deck because that's not how I do my boats because if I do that what happens is you cannot come back and get up underneath of this and weld it out solid now if you're just gonna rivet it together you know it's probably all right but that's not how I do my stuff and I don't want to use this heavy angle to frame the whole thing out I want to use the 116 tubing because it will be a lot stronger and it's lighter so I'm gonna put one of these pieces of angle right across this front right here of the resisting front deck, I'm just going to attach that with two rivets just to temporarily hold it. Then I'm going to frame back off of that with some 1x3 116s tubing to get my main two runners from point A to point B. Then I'm going to put another angle across the face of it. Then I'll probably fill in both sides with another piece of the same 1x3 tubing. Then I can take this whole thing out, flip it over, weld it good inside and out, and it'll be very strong. Now. I'm kind of on the fence still about what I want to do here with this area because I'm thinking about maybe bringing this back a little bit farther. So if I do that, I kind of have to make the decision now. I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to put you guys on a time lapse. I'm going to get this entire front deck all framed out. Then I'm going to explain to you what I did and how I did it. 
Let's get back to work. All right, so I got the whole front deck framed out. Now these long angles on top here, they're just running from the front to the back deck. I'm basically just using that as a height to gauge how high this thing needs to be so I can get the correct measurements for these angles running across this middle section right here. Now I notched out these one by three by one sixteenths tubing. That way they sit flush at the top of this angle right here. I don't wanna cause a gap and have anything not to sit flat. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna run a piece of two by one by one sixteenths rectangular tubing on either side from this front area right here up to the front of the boat. I'm gonna have that sitting up underneath this, welded solid. Once I get those tacked into place, I'm gonna take this entire deck off, I'll flip it over and weld it back. Let's get back to work. All right, so you see what we got here. I got the entire front deck laid out the way I want it. These are the hatch frames. These will pop right out. Let me get these out of the way. Now you can see how I got this thing laid out. This is my one and a half by one eighth inch aluminum angle. I use this on the front and on the back side because the hatch frame is an inch and a half. So with this three inch tube in the center, the hatch frame meets perfectly and it will also meet perfectly with my front deck. I did install this piece of angle an eighth of an inch low just so it can receive the hatch frame. Same thing over here, this one will run out flush and it will be even with the drop down portion to his floor. Now I am going to come back, I'm gonna put a couple of support braces in between here on either side. Now I'm gonna take this thing out. This thing only has two attachments holding it in right now. There's two rivets, one over here and one on that side. I'm gonna drill those out. Then I'm gonna take it out, I'm gonna tack the back side of it. Because before I weld this solid, I need to make sure the back is tacked and it's not gonna move. I'll weld this thing completely out and then I'll put it back in. I can't install this permanently until after I get the live weld installed. So that's why I do it like this. And this whole deck right here, this framing, I guarantee you it probably weighs less than six pounds. 
I'll try to weigh it if I can. I'm gonna pull this out and try to finish up this stage. Let's get back to work. So as you just saw, I added in these extra supports. I put a piece of the one by three tubing on either side. That's gonna support the deck on either side of the hatches. Then I drilled the two rivets out, picked it up, flipped it over and put it on the deck. This thing weighs nothing. I mean, look at this. This is probably like five pounds, if that. This is what makes my boat builds different than a lot of these other guys that are building boats. This is very, very light material and it's not easy to weld. These guys aren't welding stuff like this because they can't. The bottom line is this thing is going to be very, very strong and it's very, very light. Those are two things that you want to have in your John boot. I'm going to go ahead and weld this whole thing out, get this finished up and I'm going to get on to something else. Let's get back to work. All right, so this thing welded up very nice. That new machine I got is killer. That thing is just sick. This thing's gonna be hot for a long time. It's completely welded, so I'm gonna have to change gears. I'm gonna move on to this back deck. Now, obviously, I got these hatch frames made, so I know how big the hatches are gonna be. I really don't like this part of the build, but I'm gonna go ahead and lay off these holes. I'm gonna cut these holes out and I'm gonna pull all this foam out of here. Now I'm hoping that they haven't changed up the foam on me because I would be really pissed if they did. Usually this well-built foam is very easy to get out. It's usually just stacked in there and like three inch thick by you know four foot pieces. So I'm hoping this isn't gonna be a big deal. Regardless, I'm gonna probably fill up at least one and a half trash cans full of foam in here. And I'm really hoping that I don't find anything inside of here like a big rib like we have right here. I'm hoping it's open in there. That would be ideal, but more than likely, it's gonna have a rib in there. Foam, my favorite part. Let's get back to work. That was a lot of fun. Can we do it again? Yeah, we probably will, but not right now. I talked to Billy and he said he did not want to put a seat pedestal base in between these two hatches. I would recommend it, but he doesn't want it. So this is what he's getting. I went ahead and cut out both of these holes for the drop-in hatches. Luckily, this is the same foam that Wellbuilt has been using for a decade. So it should be pretty easy to get out of here. You see, I got my saws all right here. This thing has an eight inch blade on it. I'm basically gonna chop this foam up like a tic-tac-toe board. Now I'm gonna try to take it out in as big a blocks as possible. I'm gonna go get a big trash can and I'm gonna put you guys back on the time lapse. I'm gonna pull this out of here. It's not gonna take me that long, 
but it is pretty messy. And then we'll get on to something else. Let's get back to work. All right, so that last time lapse you watched was only like 20 seconds, but in reality, it was about six minutes. Six minutes, that's all it took me to cut all this foam out of here. Now, luckily, Well Built did not change up the foam they have in here. They usually have two layers. This one was actually even easier because they had like a 10 inch layer and they had a three inch layer underneath of that. I guess the one on the bottom, it's like a denser foam. It's easier to break apart. The one on top is more like a styrofoam, like popcorn styrofoam type deal. Anyways, I just chopped it up, pulled it out. The hardest part of it is playing Tetris and trying to fit it all into your trash can. I filled up an entire trash can and I put a couple pieces in another trash can. But I am just mind blown that there's no ribbon here. I mean, look at all that room. Look at all that space you got in here. There's so much space inside of these back benches. People just don't realize it. He has some ion batteries and they are very small. They're lithiums. They are sick batteries. They ain't cheap, but it's going to be perfect for this build. He's going to have so much room inside of this back bench, especially since there's not a ribbon here. Last two well builds that I had were both 2021s, and I cut open this back bench, and there's a big ass rib inside of here. I am so hyped that there's not a rib inside of here because that allows me to drop his floor down almost an inch off the bottom. That's enough room for water to run underneath of it, but it gives me so much more height to play with inside here. If that floor rib's in here, you're coming up five inches. If you're using full-size batteries, they're gonna be tight right up against the bottom of this. It's gonna be a pain in the ass. This is gonna be super simple for him to get these batteries out of here if he needs to. He's probably not gonna have to do that unless there's an issue with them though, because we're gonna be hooking up a battery tender inside of this same box. And I guarantee you, he's gonna have enough room with these big wide hatches on either side of the batteries where he could put a big cooler in here. One side could be just for his backseat boaters tackle. This thing's gonna be sick. Now that I'm already dirty and covered in foam, I'm gonna go ahead and vacuum this out and I'm gonna get on to the front of the boat. I'm gonna I'm gonna cut off this front factory trolling motor mount. I'm already dirty, I'm covered in grinding dust. I've cut a lot of stuff tonight. I might as well get this out of the way. Then I don't have anything else like this I gotta cut out of the boat. I'm gonna put you guys on the time lapse. I'm gonna cut this thing off here and I'm gonna get on to something else. Let's get back to work. for this front deck trolling motor mount that was installed up here. Cut that thing off and it looks smooth, look at that. You can't even tell that it was ever up there. I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna hit this up with some 220, maybe even something finer than that, just feather it all in before it gets painted, but this thing is gonna be sick. I'm gonna try to take the same mount that I cut off and install it up on the bow of the boat. I just think it's so much nicer when your trolling motor is sitting up here on an angle, and I'm gonna try to kick it to where it's not hanging over the side of the boat. And this thing is gonna pull so much more truer when it's dead center, and not only that, but it makes it so much easier to see it when you're standing up on the bow and fishing. Now, I'm glad that I stayed after on Friday at work and made all of the hatch track frames because it not only allowed me to finish up the front deck, but it also allowed me to finish up the back deck. Now this back bench seat is sick. There's so much room in here. And you see, I got the hatch track frames in here. This thing fits perfectly. He's gonna have so much room inside here. Well, right now it is Sunday, October 30th. About 10.45, it's getting late. I put a lot of time into the boat today and this weekend, and I'm getting kind of tired. 
I'm going to put this thing on hold. I'm going to pick right up where we left off tonight on Tuesday because tomorrow's Halloween. I got to take the kids trick or treating. I hope you guys have a good Halloween. I'll see you all on Tuesday. Let's get back to work. <clears throat> all right, so I know it's loud in here. I'm not going to do much talking, but I'm going to build this live well. I'm actually just going to cut it. I'm going to bend it and then I'm going to take it home. I'm going to weld it up at home. I'm here all myself. It's after hours. So everybody's gone. So I'm going to have to pull the sheet that's five foot by 10 foot of 080 aluminum and put it on the shear. Now I found a piece that would be perfect except it's two inches short. And I tried to figure a way to make it work. It's just not going to be right. And I can't do that. So I'm going to get this sheet pulled. I'm going to cut it and bend it up. Let's get back to work. I got it laid off. I got my marks on here. It's 30 inches this direction. I had to offset my center drain by two and a half inches because the way the well bolts are set up, they V down in the center, at least the V noses do. So this one has to come over two and a half inches. That way it can hit into one of the flat sections. I'm gonna weld this drain directly through the bottom of the boat. It's gonna be welded inside of here and on the bottom of the boat. I'm gonna bend a two and a half inch lip in the back and a one and a half lip in the front. Then I'm gonna bend it at 12 inches from that bend, which is gonna make a 12 by 14 live well. Now the reason I'm doing this inch and a half and the two and a half different lengths is because when I place this live well into the front deck, the way it drops in, it's going to be off centered of the hatch from front to back or bow to stern. The reason for that is because it's going to have only an inch and a half lip on the front of the flange. Now I'm gonna offset this so that I can put a one inch foam board completely around the entire live well and insulate it. I'm gonna move over to the brake. I'm gonna bend this thing up. I'm gonna put a slight bend right across here. And that's basically just a cross panel, that's what I call it. And that will help the water drain to the center hole here. Let's get this done. Let's get back to work. I'll run this back gauge back a little bit. Don't need that. It's not much of a cross bend. And it's really gonna be offset from our hole anyways but it will still help the water drain. You see our hole is two, it's still two and a half inches off, but it's fine. That little bit will just keep the water from pulling up in the corners. And I'm probably even recess this down with a recess punch in here, so it'll drain fine.
pretty simple when you have the right tools. All right, so now that we have the main body of the live well made, we need two more pieces. We need the end pieces. I'm gonna take two pieces. I'm gonna bend the lip on top on either side. So that way it really keeps the water from splashing back up. And also this lip on top, I will run silicone sealant around this before I drop the hatch in. That way none of the water and the oversplash will get out and seep down into the bottom of your boat. Okay. Well, 13 and 3 quarters, and 14 and 8. Let's go find some metal. We got a perfect piece. It's 14, it's a little scratched up, but it's gonna be inside the live well. It'll be alright. Go back to the brake. Our two end pieces. All right, so I got everything I need for the live well. That live well is gonna be sweet in there. It's gonna be deep, it's gonna be big. It's gonna hold a lot of water. It should easily hold 20 gallons, even once it's full. I've calculated in losing about an inch and a half, two inches of water at the top. You really need to have about 17 to 20 gallons if you wanna keep five fish alive. Now, I'm gonna build a rod locker. There was a lot of people that commented in the last video and they made a lot of valid points about a rod locker. I'm not against it. It just makes the whole build a little bit more intricate and a little bit more difficult. It's okay though. I'm gonna make it happen. I'm gonna cut two more hatches. That way I can finish up the whole front deck and just get a better idea of how I'm gonna do this whole rod locker. Cause this thing has to be completely finished and figured out before I start putting this front deck in there. I'm gonna cut the hatch frame for the rod locker and I'm also gonna cut another small hatch. Usually I would incorporate these into my electrical panel box, but this one's just gonna be small. It's basically just gonna be an access panel. It's gonna be a hatch with a pan inside of it. Just like in the Mary Jane build, it's going right next to the live well. It's basically just access for you to get to the pumps in case you need to change the pumps in the live well. It will also serve as a day box. It'll have a little pan in it. It's gonna be pretty cool. I'm gonna go ahead and get these cut and then we'll get home. We'll finish welding up this live well. Let's get back to work. All right, so I started cutting all those dry hatch track frames I need. Um, I just decided I'm gonna go home because it's already getting late. It's like 5.30. I still got a lot of stuff I wanna do tonight. I'm trying to put this live well in. I gotta weld that whole thing up. I'm gonna have to put the drain in. I'm gonna have to cut this, the ribs and the floor out just to drop the live well in. So I got a decent amount of stuff I wanna do. I'm trying to wrap this video up so that I can hopefully drop it to you guys tomorrow. So. I don't need those frames to figure it out. I know what I need. I'm gonna make the hatch for the rod locker 10 inches by 40 inches. The only thing I'm gonna to have to figure out before I put that deck in there and finalize it is how much room I can cut into the existing front deck that comes stock in the boat. Because he only has six feet of space between the front deck and 
the rear deck that are stock in that weld build. So I'm gonna have to cut inside of there and probably steal at least two feet so I can give them an eight foot rod locker. It's kind of hard to do when you're only working with a 14 foot boat. You don't got a lot of room to put an eight foot anything in it. But I'm gonna get home and figure this out. We'll catch back up when I get to the house. All right, so it's Tuesday night. It is November 1st. I am about to weld this live well up. Now, I did have a couple of guys stop by tonight, including Billy, and Billy was checking out the boat. He's stoked about this thing. We're trying to get a schedule together so I can give him all the hatches. He's gonna paint those next week. And then probably in the next two to three weeks, I'm gonna give him the entire boat. He's gonna take the boat to his paint shop. He's gonna paint the entire thing inside and out. It's gonna be sick. This live well right here, I make a lot of live wells. I've never lost a fish in a live well that I have built in the past decade. I'm trying to keep the streak going. I'm not gonna build you a subpar live well or something that's not gonna keep your fish alive. This live well is 12 inches deep by 14 inches wide by 30 inches long. Now this thing is a 20 gallon tank. So when it's full, it's probably gonna be at least 17 to 18 gallons. That's what you need. This extra lip bent on top this lip is very important. This keeps the water from splashing out. Not only that, once you set the hatch that I sell you on top of it, the hatch mounts right up against it. You can seal it with silicone and the thing is like a perfect watertight fit. I'm gonna get this thing welded up right now. You can see how I bent these pieces for the ends. These are the ends I'm gonna implant into the body. This is very simple. It just slides right inside of here. Just like that. I've already put one over here. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna mark this on the top on either side. I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna cut that little piece out on the corner so I can pull this up tight and flush it up. Then I'm gonna weld it solid all the way around. This thing is almost like a completely enclosed box. It makes a humongous difference when you're putting a live well in your boat because if you just have them straight up, then it's just water can flow up. It's gonna eventually find a crack or somewhere to leak out. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these corners, get this thing set up and tacked up because I really want to use this new welder again. I actually enjoy laying dimes on stuff like this. It's kind of my escape from reality. When the hood drops, the bullshit stops. Let's get back to work. I got the tank tacked up. Now this is a true 20 gallon live well. It's 19.9 gallons. The thing people don't understand about the live well is that you're not going to be able to fill it all the way to the top. And the calculation for the formula is length times width times height divided by 231. That will give you the exact amount of gallons that are in your live well or tank, gas tank, whatever you're building. The bottom line is you're not gonna be able to fill this thing up to the brim. It's just not gonna happen. Your, your overflow and you know your fill line, all that stuff, you, you got to understand that it's gonna drop like a two inches below that. So if you really wanna calculate your live well full volume, you might as well go ahead and subtract two inches off of your height on the live well. This live well will fill up between 17 to 18 gallons, which is more than enough to keep the tanks alive. This is a tank tank, not a dink tank. Now, if you guys are interested in purchasing one of these live wells, I'm gonna start selling these. I've got a stamp for the bottom so your fitting can fit in there. I even sell the fittings. I'm gonna show those to you guys too. I'll put them right up here in the corner. But the bottom line is these tanks are not that crazy expensive. I'm gonna start selling these for $250 a pop. And the lids, they're gonna fit on top of them. Those are gonna be $200. So you're looking at $450 to get a live well tank with a lid. Go shop around, see where your prices are at. So I'm gonna weld this out. This video is getting long as crap, so I'm probably gonna have to call this one. But as soon as we pick up next time, you're gonna see me installing this thing in the boat. I gotta cut off those ribs. That's gonna be fun too. But it's gonna be pretty exciting to see how I do it. I'll see you guys later. I gotta get back to work.
All right, guys, I know these videos are getting longer and longer. I'm not trying to make them longer. I just can't help it. There's so much information that I need to give you guys. There is so much that goes into these bills. I cannot drop them in a 10 minute video. And it seems like the more in depth I get into it, the longer they just get. Anyways, I made myself a checklist because I wanted to share some things with you guys and I feel like I always forget about something I wanted to say to you in the outro. So the first matter at hand, the live well that I'm selling is $250. It's a true 20 gallon live well, which means that full size is probably 17 to 18 gallons. If you want one of these live wells, all you gotta do is send me a message or an email on Trick Tins, John Boats, or right here in the comments down below. Now, the second matter I wanted to come to, Music. I have put music in all of my videos. I love music. Now I try not to overpower anything that I'm doing with music, but there was a good spot where this video had like three minutes of no music where I was using the break and the shear and there was just the sounds in the background of, you know, the tools I was using and stuff. So I want to know your feedback on what you think about putting music in the video or just hearing the background noise of me using the tools and, and whatever else I'm using. So leave a comment about that. The next thing I want to talk about, I have about 250 sheets of 0 0.080 3033 aluminum. And it's bendable aluminum. These sheets are 20 inches by 48 inches long. I've already been selling them to the local guys. Now it's coming live on YouTube. So if you guys are interested in purchasing any of these sheets, I am going to sell these sheets for $25 a piece. If you buy five sheets, I will give you a six sheet for free if you pick it up. If you buy five sheets and you want me to ship them to you, I will pay $25 of the shipping cost and whatever else it is, you're gonna have to pick up. More than likely, it's not gonna be much. It might be like five to $10 or it might be nothing. But if you're interested in any of those sheets I have, leave a comment down below or reach out to me on tricktinsjohnboats.com. All right, so the next item at hand is the tournament. I'm fishing a tournament with SB. My homeboy, Matt Strykel from SP Fishing TV. Obviously, he's been fishing out of King Neptune. That is the baddest John boat ever built by any group, any man ever. That thing is sick. It's a going away party for one of my good friends, Travis Crowell. This dude is an amazing fisherman and I'm kind of sad to see him go, but he's actually moving to Texas. He's in the military and you know how the military works. So this is a big deal for me. I've never fished any bass tournaments in my entire life. So this is the first tournament I'm gonna fish and I'm gonna fish it with SB and I'm gonna fish it out of the baddest Jambo ever built. So I hope that you guys that are local will come out and check that out. It's on the 13th of November, not this Sunday, but next Sunday. Appreciate all you guys watching. Hit that like and subscribe button. Please help me grow the channel, guys. There's a whole realm out there of boat builders that are doing stuff that aren't even close to where we're at. Let's grow this channel, let's blow up, let's explore this. Let's just make this thing go to the next level. I appreciate you guys. I'll see y'all next time. I gotta get back to work.